In this mystical dream of St. John Bosco, he's literally flown to a mysterious palace to hear advice from a bishop who had been long dead on how to avoid purgatory. You're watching The Miracles and Prophecies of St. John Bosco, a project of America Needs Fatima. I'm your host, Matthew Miller. Don Bosco spoke to the whole community after evening prayers. He said, Last night, not being able to sleep, I began thinking about the existence of the soul, how it was made, in what way it could speak in the afterlife while separated from the body. How could it transport itself from one place to another? How would we be able to know one another after death, since we exist only as pure spirits? And the more I thought about this, the more obscure the mystery became in my mind. So, while thinking about this and similar ideas, I fell asleep and seemed to be traversing countries unknown to me. Then, all of a sudden, I heard my name called. It was the voice of a person standing on the road. Come with me, he said. You will now be able to see what you desire. I obeyed, and we moved swiftly without our feet touching the ground. We then reached an unknown location, and my guide stopped. High above was a magnificent palace. I no longer remember whether it was on a mountain or a cloud. It was inaccessible, and no road could be seen leading to it. Go up to that palace, said the guide. How? I haven't got wings, I responded. Go up, he commanded. Seeing I didn't move, he said, Do as I do. Raise your arms and come with me. So he lifted his hands toward heaven. I opened my arms and immediately felt lifted through the air. In a few brief moments, we reached the palace gates. What's in here? I asked. Go in and you'll see. At the end of the hall, someone will teach you. The guide disappeared and I remained alone, so I entered and climbed the stairs. I passed through spacious halls, ornate rooms, and long corridors with supernatural speed. Every room glittered with splendor and astonishing treasures, and with great speed I moved through so many rooms that I couldn't even count them all. But the most admirable thing was that I was moving with the swiftness of the wind, but didn't move my feet because I was suspended in the air without touching the floor. Finally, I came to a great hall that was more magnificent than all the others. At the end, I saw a bishop who was waiting as if to give an audience. I approached respectfully and was surprised to recognize him as an intimate friend who died two years ago. He looked healthy, friendly, and very handsome. Your Excellency, is it really you? I said to him with great joy. Can't you see it's me? replied the bishop. Are you still alive? But didn't you die? I am dead. Because if you're alive, another bishop has taken your place. How shall we deal with this problem? Rest assured, I'm dead. And you, Don Bosco, are you dead or alive? I I'm alive. Can't you see I'm here in body and soul? But you cannot come here with your body. Yet, here I am. It seems you are. But you are not, I interrupted him, and I had to ask many unanswered questions. How can it be that I'm alive with you who are already dead? I feared the bishop would disappear, so I begged him, Your Excellency, please don't leave me, I have so many things to ask. Be calm, my son, don't doubt, I won't leave, speak. Are you saved? Look at me, see how well I am, fresh and resplendent? His appearance truly gave me hope that he was saved, but I insisted, Tell me, are you saved, yes or no? Yes, I am in a place of salvation. Are you in heaven, enjoying the Lord, or in purgatory? I am in a place of salvation, but I have not yet seen God, and I still need your prayers. How much longer will you be in purgatory? He handed me a paper and said, Read this. I took the paper in my hand and looked at it carefully, but I saw nothing written on it, only floral designs, and said, I see nothing on it. The bishop looked at that paper and said, Turn the paper upside down. 
I examined the paper more carefully and turned it every which way, but it seemed that among the floral designs was only the number two. The bishop continued, Do you know why it's necessary to read this upside down? The judgments of the Lord are different from the world's judgments. What men think is wisdom is foolishness to God. I dared not press for a more precise explanation and said, Your Excellency, I want to ask you some other questions. Ask away. I'll listen. Will I be saved? You must hope, my son. Please tell me if I will be saved. I don't know. At least tell me whether I am or or am not in God's grace. I don't know. But will my boys be saved? You have studied theology, and you can answer that yourself. You're in a place of salvation, Your Excellency, and you don't know these things? The Lord makes known to whoever He wills. If He wants this knowledge communicated, He gives the order and permission. Otherwise, no one can reveal it to the living. Many, many questions came to mind, and I asked them in haste for fear the bishop would withdraw. Tell me a few things to report to the boys from you. You know as well as I do what must be done. The church, the gospel, and the scriptures tell you everything. Tell them to save their souls, because the rest counts for nothing. We already know that we have to save our souls, but how are we to do this? Tell me something special we can remember that I can tell my boys on your behalf. Tell them to be good and obedient. And who doesn't know these things, Your Excellency? How about something else? Tell them to be modest and to pray. But can you explain that more practically? Tell them to confess often and make good communions. Something else, Your Excellency. Tell them that they have a fog before their eyes. If they are aware of it, it's a good sign. So let them remove it. But what is this fog, Your Excellency? It's all the things of the world which prevent them from seeing heavenly things as they are. And how are they to remove this fog? Let them consider the world as it is. The whole world is under the influence of the evil one. Only then will they save their souls. Let them not be deceived by the appearances of the world. Young people believe that the world's pleasures, joys, and friendships are the only things that can make them happy, so they only spend their time enjoying these pleasures. But let them remember that everything is vanity and affliction of spirit. Let them form the habit to see the things of the world not as they appear, but as they are. But what causes this fog, Your Excellency? The virtue that shines brightest in heaven is purity, so the sin of immodesty and impurity mainly produce this darkness and fog. It's like a very dense black cloud that takes away sight and prevents young people from seeing the precipice to which they are speedily heading. Tell them to persevere in the virtue of purity jealously. The pure shall flourish like the lily. At this, Don Bosco asked, What does it take to preserve purity? Tell me, and I will announce it to my dear boys. The bishop responded, Four things. Prayer, obedience, avoiding idleness, and flight from worldly things. Nothing else? Prayer, avoiding idleness, obedience, and flight from worldly things. Insist on it. That is enough. I still wanted to ask many things, but none came to mind, unfortunately. So as soon as the bishop had finished speaking, I was eager to tell you the advice he had given me, so I left that great hall quickly and ran to the oratory. I flew with the swiftness of the wind, and in an instant I was at the door of the oratory. When I arrived, I stopped and thought, why didn't I stay longer with the bishop? I would have had even better clarifications, I was wrong to let such a good opportunity escape me. I could have learned so many more good things. I turned to go back, but bumped my knee into something, and I awoke. Remember that this is a dream like all other dreams, and as far as you are concerned, it needs no explanation. We're still quite imperfect, and have remnants of sin to atone for, 
and habits to give up. So even though we've gone to confession many times, we still must atone for our sins. Therefore, purgatory is the perfect place that God in his mercy has created to purify us. Thus, Don Bosco finished his extraordinary speech to his community. Thank you all so much for watching, and if you'd like to watch a playlist of all the dreams that we've performed on this channel, please click on the link I've put on the screen. God bless you, and Our Lady keep you.